Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today, I'm excited to be bringing you the build of a keyboard that is new to me. Um, I previously reviewed the TKC, or the key company, the Portico 75. I bought one, I forgot how much it was, it was on sale for Black Friday, for, for Black Friday Cyber Monday. And actually, quite a few of us over on our budget keeps ended up picking one up. And I was honestly quite surprised, though I am not usually the biggest fan of translucent or clear cases. Um, I thought the Portico 75 pulled it off quite well, and it was a great keyboard. Um, I recently saw that they had released a new version of the Portico 68 called the Black Label that uh, came in a CNC case. Well, I reached out uh, to their marketing department, and I basically said I'm interested in taking a look at the keyboard and um, despite them having already sent out some review units they said they were able to scrape one up for me and they sent it to me and I thank them for the opportunity to take a look and build this Portico 68 black label today so there it is just kidding now time to open her up got a new TKC sticker that's going to be going on. I'm going to be having one of my backgrounds for my new studio. It's going to be a wall full of stickers. Uh, yeah, there's there's the Portico 75. kind of wish I would have gotten it with the combining uh, keycaps, but I just got the uh, switch. So first in the box, we have Infinikey Portico 75. I thought it was a different set, but um, I must have gotten my wires crossed. But as you can see, it's kind of set up for a uh, portico 75 but it does include some extra keys to make up for it because this is a 68. now we also got the kiwi switches nice green color black stem and yeah it's a nice bump at the yeah, bump is at the top and then it kind of dives off it's not heavy but it's not ultra light Not bad, not bad. All right, I got PCB screw and stabilizers, stab grease in a nice little container, and looks like a syringe. We're gonna be using all of this to build this. So this is a key co, the, the key dot co, and equals. I do love when they're packaged well. Some keyboards, it's like, all right, we, we built it, throw it in the box. No extra protection. This is, oh, yeah, this is some dense foam. Woo! This thing is definitely going to be protected from any sort of travel issues. All right, so let's see. Oh, it looks like everything in a bag. So we got a set of screws and what looks like studs. I would imagine those would be for the plate. Looks like we've got. Uh, those look like feet. Yep, those are feet. All right. So it looks like the majority of the build here is just going to be installing the stabilizers, the switches, and the keycaps. So this is the Bombay colorway for the Portico 68 black label. So we see the cutouts are quite specifically made for screwing. Um, PCB stabilizers. I, I must say, I do like the lines on this case. Um, I believe that's called a wedge. Um, but looking at this thing, I mean, the finish looks lovely. Oh, that was just dust. I, I don't see a single blemish on here. The finish is nice and smooth. It's not gritty. I'm guessing this might be extra because it does look like it's already attached. So just real quick, I just wanted to give an overview uh, before I start diving in. And, and this is a 65% from Portico. It has a gasket mounted style. It comes with an FR4 plate and the plate thickness is 1.5 millimeters. It has hop swappable and switch RGB. 
They're not individually addressable and it is programmable with VIA. And it also has the USB-C connection. So stabilizers, screw and stabilizers what we have right here. And yeah, they are made by that's uh, yeah, equals. I have not tried these stabilizers before. Those for the screws, and I'm gonna get my handy dandy photo. Alright, I got the right screw fit. Just don't want to strip any screw heads. Nice and gentle. Alright, for the last and final screw. Alright, let's check out the top frame. All right, uh, this is how I like it. The uh, gaskets are actually on the case. I Honestly, I prefer that than being on, on the uh, plate. I think it can introduce some issues, but that's just my personal preference. Um, now, let's see. Assume we have a dartboard here. Yep. All right. So I think that was, um, there was an issue with the uh, portico or didn't have a daughter board, so I think they redesigned this and came out with the black label. And I gotta say, I mean, I love the colors. I love that. I mean, they call it Bombay. I don't know if that is a color. I it probably is. They probably, I mean, 16 million colors. Probably used every word up. But it's that silver blue, which just hits the eyes just right. All right, so there's our JST connector. And look, this is actually a nice JST connector that actually detaches as it should. That, that's how a JST connector should work. I'm sorry, I keep just thinking about issues that I had. Now we can see there's actually some downward facing LEDs. So it would be interesting if this came with a, say a CNC acrylic uh, bottom case and an aluminum top. Let's just focus on what we're doing today. All right, this is not going to stay on. Let's just go ahead and pull that off. Now we're going to need what we're putting under here, though. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, so just check out the bottom case real quick. Again, we've got gaskets on basically like studs that fit in like puzzle pieces. And we have a nice channel for the uh, JST to sit in. And there's hardly any room here. I'm going to assume this is going to sound pretty good. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. All right, so there's the plate and the foam. And now we have the PCB and there's the studs. All right. Nice. All right, so let's see what these stabs include. I like that they include not only the stabs, but some lubricant for the stabs, as, I mean, there's there's bound to be people that are gonna be buying these that don't already have, um, you know, the supplies at hand that some of us might have. So, all the stabilizers are separated. They do not need to be clipped, as they do not have the feet. There's the housings. There's the pads to go underneath them. There's the screws. Ain't going to lose those. Those are like copper. Almost like, are these hot? Are they going to be red hot? We've got the washers for where the screw goes into on the back. And we've got our wires. And nice, they even include a, um, looks like a 7U. Now these are basically replacing, like say if you do the, the Band-Aid mod on the PCB, um, this is going to reduce... Oh, and they actually have, huh, are these for force break, I imagine? Okay, I was going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm short here, what, there's two. All right, so we got enough for six, and we only got four stabs, so we're good to go. Um, I'm going to put these pads on first, onto the PCB here. May need my tweezers, but let's see how these come. I really like the material. This um, I don't know what what type of material it is, but it has it has cushioning. It's not just a thin layer of film. It actually has like a soft cushioning to it. So I'm gonna assume that's gonna help with these stabilizers even more. All right, pull this 
this off. Get rid of the center piece. on there now let's build them because we can't put those on until we start screwing them in I like this a lot it's a nice uh, almost feels like a resin syringe and then we've got two different size tips take off the stopper I'm gonna take the smaller one and put on Lovely that we don't have to clip these. We're just going to have to make sure that they're aligned properly. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit to the housing. Add some lube to the stabilizer. So that lube will spread out. All right. Nice and smooth, does not seem to be any binding. Just Same thing over here, just a little bit. And kind of just run it around the inside. I'm just making it up as I go along. <laughs> back in. I mean, the stem. Not the stab. This is the stab. Do the same thing with this one. Some might say it's a little much, but I think it'll be fine. If it's not, I can always take it out and clean it. So, yeah, there's no mushiness. Yeah, it's just nice and smooth. All right, so to get these on, the clip goes into the bigger hole. You press until the smaller one snaps into place. There definitely seems to be some tension, or maybe that's intentional. Go ahead and now we need our washers. And the washers we only need to place on the back of where the screws are going into. And this just prevents any, I mean, it doesn't look like there's any um, traces right around there, but it's just to protect to make sure that anything metal just doesn't have direct contact on the PCB. These are actually the same washers that are used on motherboards. And here we're going to want to make sure, are these anodized? Yep, alright. I want to make sure that the hole is in place, so on this one for some reason we're having to hold it in. Usually that will just lock into place and give you, you know, hold so you don't have to fight with it, but Mandalorian says hi, he likes to make sure that I don't screw up when I'm building keyboards. <laughs> alright, so we've got the washer on there and normally these when you press it in they snap into place why well, it's not happening here I don't know but I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way please don't over tighten you are dealing with the PCB and though they're not as sensitive as they were in the 90s you can still damage it if it's just easier to do it like here this way so the washer won't come off the screw because of gravity and we just do it until it's tight. Just want to make sure that the housing doesn't move, doesn't wobble. And we also, while we're here, trust me, I don't know. I don't want to think about how many times I've actually been, yeah, it works. And then I didn't test it 
and was sadly disappointed that I had to take the entire thing apart. So definitely a good idea uh, to test your stabilizers. So. I can hear the tactile bump. Oh, sounds good. Good. Right, leave it now. It'd be easier to install without this on there. Hey, you took my switch with you. All right, so let's go ahead and do the rest of the stabilizer. I'm going to do the same thing. So lube in the stabilizer and then put the washer on this lovely copper fire gold. Copper gold, fire gold, fire copper, fire copper. Is that like blue steel? I can't do blue steel. I don't know why I'm even trying. All right, and we are on here. So get this on the screw. Let's try to keep these in place since they don't want to clip. I find that kind of odd that they don't clip in place, but I'm wondering if that tension helps to add to the stability. One screw, then oh, almost lost those. And another screw. I love working with tiny little things. Let's do the same thing. You're over here. Press down on you, Mr. Stabilizer. And then line her up. Make sure it's straight. And let's go. As soon as it stops, you let it go. Right. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the stabilizers on, test them as we go. A little goes a long way, just putting the slightest amount just so you can see that it's shining on there and make sure to go up on the elbow. I mean, some of you may want to use paint brushes uh, and that's fine. I'm just, I'm preferential to doing it as quick and easy as I can. Uh, as long as the results are good, I will take more time if it's necessary. So now you can see it's just glossy but that should be more than enough to make sure that we have a smooth, non-rattly experience. And so one more time, we're just gonna take a little dab there at the tip. And we're gonna take that dab, spread it with the syringe, tip, and go past the elbow. We wanna spread it, we just basically want it to have like a, a skin of grease. Don't need it to have a glob. Just a skin. Let me take that side that we just lubricated. Make sure we got lined up into the housing and then we're going through the hole at an angle. And then pick it up a little bit and clip it in. All right, same thing for the other side. Take the lube, little dab will do. A little goes a long way, always remember. We take it up all the way past the elbow because there's contact there with the housing. And we just want to make sure that it has a nice sheen, almost like a skin of grease. sand at a time. So I put the washer on the screw. Make sure this is clipped in. Which ones are we going to? Right here. Press one in from below. Get it lined up. And screw until it stops. And same thing for the other side. Put the washer on. 
get it preferably on your magnetized tip. Line it up. There we go. I always want to make sure these clips are going onto the other side of the PCB because that's how they hold on. You can see them right here. See how it's above the PCB. All right, get that hole lined up. Always save any spare parts. You never know when you might need them for this build or another. I am going to go ahead and put this on the PCB and screw it together. Yeah, let me do that first. screws. Alright, right. so we've got this put together. Now let's do the force brake. So force brake, now we've got these, I'm going to use these pads. But the force brake mod is basically just adding some sort of cushioning on either side of where screw holes go into and connect the top and the half, bottom parts of the PCB, or of the um, case of the, pe the keyboard. So these are some little tiny pieces, but we're going to basically just set them on either side of the screw hole and tape them down. Alright, I think we got the back one taken care of. Make sure it's nice and adhered and that it's not covering the hole because that could cause some issues. Even just a little bit covering it can make the screw go sideways. got the case part done. Now, honestly, I'm kind of tempted to put polyfill in there, and, and I may, but for another video. This is stock, so. All right, I'm gonna put away all this stuff. All right, so today we're gonna be loading them up with the Kiwi switches from TKC. Um, they're a 67 gram tactile using a T1 stem. They're lightly factory lubed, and they have a translucent bright housing with N9 gray stem. All right, is it T1 or 9 gray? Nine, N9. Same housing material as, as the Tangies. Oh, proprietary C3 equals top housing design, gold plated internals, past, packaged in plastic containers with a sticker on it. Well, I guess because this came with the keyboard, I just got the bag, which is fine. So, <clears throat> so No spring ping to pe speak of, and I prefer heavier switches, so I think this one is going to be just fine. Yeah, no ping. Just a nice snap of a tactile switch. So I'm going to go ahead and load these up before we uh, put it together, 
and it makes it a little bit easier since I can support hot swap sockets. So let's go ahead and do the switches. And here we are, Portico 68 loaded with the Kiwi tactile switches. Um, I gotta say, I got a good feeling about this. This way, all right. Now, And here we are. This is the Portico 68 black label in the Indico colorway with the Infiniki blue on white. Now, I gotta say stock, this is amazing. Now I know what I can do and I will be coming back to it to make it pop just a little bit more. But as a stock build, but I'm definitely gonna be coming back to this soon to mod it up and even improve the sound of this keyboard. I, I gotta say it's it's well built. Um, the fact that you only have to install the stabilizers is nice. Um, it is gasket mounted and there is some flex. It's not like there's none, but it's not going to be your flexi flexi boy. Um, I'm gonna be putting either silicone or a very thin layer of foam uh, down below, making sure that it's not gonna interfere. I'm probably gonna do a tape mod and a PE foam mod or PE pad or the PE foam pads um, to add a little bit more pop. Yeah, I've got to say I'm quite quite impressed with this. Let's get technical. Today we built the key company Portico Black Label. It is a 65% anodized aluminum case. Uh, this one is the Bombay colorway. This does come in four different colorways: rose. Obsidian, Angora, and Bombay. It comes with an FR4 plate and it is made with the gasket mounting system. It also includes PCB stabilizers by C3 equals. It has a 7 degree typing angle and loaded with switches and keycaps weighs in at 1,234 grams. It has VIA and QMK out of the box. It Manufacturer retails for $199.99, but is currently listed on the key company's website for $159.99. All right, so with the Portico Black Label, we're basically dealing with a Portico version 2. Now, I am not sure if they're going to release this in a um, case or a plastic case as they did, or they're just going to continue selling it like this. Now, don't get me wrong, this one's stock, and it's pretty nice. Those are the Marble OG, OG Soda, I think. I just wanna do a quick comparison with other CNC aluminum 65% kits. Now, here we have the NJ68 Pro. Now, this one obviously does have some, uh, some extra features that most of your keyboards are not gonna have, but, off the bat, I can tell you that this is a much thinner grade of aluminum. Don't get me wrong, I like this keyboard because of the extra perks, but this one is far more solid. Here we have the TacWorks T3. Now granted, yes, this one does have Bluetooth, but this keyboard is $400. It is not worth the money. And here we have the Momoka Zoo. Now this one is a decent keyboard, but it retails for more than this one. So right now, this one retails for $159 bare bone. This one retails for $209 and up. This one is $400. This one is $199 and up. Out of all of these, this one's the only one that comes even close 
but it doesn't sound as good. They both have about the same weight. Uh, maybe the Zoo has a little bit more on it, but I don't know about that. I don't get that, honestly. For the, for the money, I've got to say out of all of these. Now this one, of course, if you want to screen in an app, uh, you're really not going to beat it. But you are dealing with a lower grade, lower thickness aluminum. This one is much, much lighter. But it does have feet. I do like that. That is a pretty cool feature. Um, and it also, oh yeah, it is Bluetooth as well. So, I know that it's not necessarily a fair comparison, but I just kind of want to, to, to show the difference. Now, this is a company based out of the U.S. They're actually right here in the Detroit metro area. So, they've got a bit of a leg up. I know that they're assembling or putting everything together here. Um, it would be nice if they manufactured here, but I, I know manufacturing, that's a whole, whole different um, ball of wax. But I've got to say, for the money, this Portico 68 provides good value, in my opinion. Now granted, just to take into consideration, I did do a force brake mod while building it because it did come with the pads. So I consider that stock because they include it. From the numerous 65% and even 60% that I've built that are CNC aluminum, this is already ranked, ranking high up there in my list. Not only because of the, the value proposition, I mean, $159 for this keyboard is quite good. Um, it's in the range of, uh, like, say, a Bacaneco. Uh, but Bacaneco that I have, the finish is not as nice as this. And the O ring implementation in the Bacaneco, it's not mine. It's not necessarily my cup of tea. The fact that I have to use clip in stabilizers on the PCB. And they also play second duty to hold the O-ring in place. It's just, it's poor design. I know it's open source, but there should be studs to hold the, the O-ring in place and screw and stabilizers. But we're not talking about that keyboard. Today we're talking about the Portico Black Label 68 V2. Um, I know they're calling it Black Label, but I want to call it the V2. I got to say. Out of the box stock i mean obviously you know we had to we added their uh the equal that is the first time that i've used these and they're fine um i usually go with just the samsung screw and stabs but these were nice um i did have to be really careful when putting them in because i did i, I was able to screw them in without them being all the way against the plate so it was best to hold them pressed up against the plate while screwing it in. That way I made sure that the little collar where the screws goes into was inside of the hole and the stabilizer was flat against the PCB. I, I gotta say, I do like the stab grease. Um, that it, it really, it, it is easy to apply. And as you saw, I didn't use a brush in this and stab sound. Lovely. So if you're looking for a 65% kit that isn't going to break the bank, is going to give you good performance out of the box, and you don't need wireless because, I mean, like I said, again, this is just a wired board, but it is well built. It's QMK via, or via right out of the box, although I do believe it's in the QMK tree. I do believe it's in the QMK tree. I have to double check that. Um, the key company does offer a nice selection of switches, um, some that I believe are just exclusive to them, if I'm not mistaken. The ones we're trying with here are the key. Yeah, these are TKC keys. I'm gonna guess they, they watched a few of my videos and figured that I was a tactile guy, and that's why they sent me over these. But they're a in medium weight tactile that have a nice snap to them. I I do kind of like them. They, they are lightly lubricated, so there's no spring ping to speak of. We also have the Infinity Key. Now, they, uh, this appears to be a set just for the, um, the Portico 75, so that's why they included a couple of extra keys. Now, I will say this, they did forget the, uh, the Yen Key. 
that's the key right there so I guess I could have used this one but these are die sub key caps that are zeroed out let's see what we got here so we got one 1.4 so these key caps are 1.4 millimeters in thickness these are dice up key caps but they are decent I have this is a my second key set um, and I like I like how they sound so 65% CNC aluminum two-part case and gasket mount with just enough flux not too much flux um, we got via out of the box good to go it's immediately detected by use via no need to uh, deal with those JSON files to me that's that's becoming more and more important nowadays especially since I run Linux I love that I can just load up a web browser type in use via.app and I'm able to program my keyboard right away I will be coming back to this keyboard because there are a few mods that I want to do to it I definitely want to try out some different switches and keycaps um, I particularly love this silver blue color um, they call it Bombay and I'm not sure if that's because of the color because of India I don't know enough about colors but it is definitely something that I quite enjoy because it's not it's very subtle it could be silver from one angle it could be light blue from another angle um, and it, honestly it looks quite good with these uh, blue on white key cap. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do my sound test I actually have a matching wrist press I'm just throwing this in a new feed just recent really recently released uh, I guess from a lot of feedback I I don't usually use wrist rest as I have a keyboard drawer that has a wrist rest built into it but as I've been working on more workstations and actually doing a lot of work just right here I've had to use start using wrist rest because I don't have it and I used to think and back in the day when I bought wrist rest I would get soft wrist rest and I'd always get tired of them after some time I just always thought hard no but desks are hard and I've been using desks as my wrist rest for years so I, I um, I've actually uh, started using rest rest regularly and uh, Nufi was kind enough to send me out a couple of wrist rests. Now this one's the one in blue. They have a whole bunch of different colors. Now the different colors are 65, 75% size, and they have black and white up to 96%, uh, 100%. But I gotta say, I mean, I don't know if that could be like an aluminum overlay, but they're they're just quite nice. They feel nice, and they come in different colors. Today we built the. Uh, the TKC Portico Black Label or TKC Portico 68 V2. Um, they do have it listed as the uh, Portico Black Label. It does come in several different colors on their website. And it does retail right now for $159.99, which in my opinion, for what you get, I think it is a good value. Um, the JST connectors actually work. Uh, I hate to keep bringing that up. I'm doing it yet again with another V65 that was sent to me. And we're going to take a look at yet another faulty JST connector here. I was able to disconnect, connect the JST connector without issue. In my opinion, I I enjoy this keyboard. I've enjoyed everything from the TKC so far. Uh, or the TKC, the key company. Not the, the key company. <laughs> the key company. Like I said, they're based right here in uh, Detroit Metro, where I am. So... I guess they've got they've they've earned a little bit more of a place in my heart, um, and uh, hopefully we will be I'll be getting together with them in regards to doing another keyboard meetup here in the near future. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of the Portico Black Label in Bombay with IFK blue on white, and I, like I said, I will be coming back to this keyboard in the near future. Uh, to do some mods and spice it up so i hope that you guys uh you know feel free to leave me your comments what do you think about this one as compared to some other 65 percent that i've been reviewing lately and if you have any ideas or anything that you would like me to do as far as mods go when i come back to this video make sure to comment below and you know 
a like and a subscribe doesn't hurt if this is the first time you've come across my videos. If you don't think I've earned your follow, then let me know below in the comments what I could do to earn that. Anyway, until the next transmission, keep calm and keep it on.